Hey, what's going on guys? Jason here and thanks so much for stopping by today. In this episode, we're going to start tearing apart the rear axle. We've got brakes, uh, we want to go ahead and inspect the differential. There's several things that we want to do to it and we're just going to go ahead and get them kicked off now. Um, I'm not going to do a full bearing overhaul. I'm not going to remove the carrier. I'm not going to remove the ring and pinion. Anything like that, uh, simply because when the Jeep is finally up and on the road, I want to make sure the gears that are in it are going to be right for the powertrain and provided everything feels good and it's not hunting for gears or anything like that, um, then we'll go through and do an overhaul of the entire thing. I'm suspecting that I'm going to need to change the gears. Uh, I've done a couple gear calculators and though the, we're using a diesel engine that's got more of a power band like a car. I still think there might be a little bit of problem in the future. So I'm holding off on the bearing overhaul, but we're going to get to the rest of it right now. All right, what a pain that was. Hey, thanks for sticking around guys. So this is going to be a big part of our subject matter right here. Um, these are the rear brakes. They're pretty bad on both sides of the Jeep. The wheel seals are blown out um, on the wheel cylinders. The brake pads themselves are cracked and broken. So we're going to make sure that we go ahead and replace all of this. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and pull the diff cover so I can get the actual shafts out of the way. I'm going to inspect the uh, inner axle seals and stuff like that just to make sure they're all right. They haven't been leaking fluid, so I don't anticipate them to leak fluid or anything like that. But before we get started on these brakes, I want to throw one really good warning in here for you. And it's not so much of a warning as a learning tool. The most important thing to know about brakes is no matter what you do, do not let this dust get into the air. You're not going to want to use compressed air or anything like that on this because you're going to blow fine particles of asbestos into the air um, depending on if you have organic, semi-metallic or metallic pads, it's going to change the asbestos content. Um, a lot of people think that asbestos is illegal now, but it's actually not. You're not allowed to use it in new manufacturing processes, however it is still used in old manufacturing processes by federal law. So. Do not use compressed air on a brake system. Use brake clean. That's, that's what it's there for. I mean, that stuff captures all the dust, suspends it in a liquid, and it falls down, so you don't got to worry about breathing that stuff in. So we're going to go ahead and get all this stuff brake cleaned and start disassembly. Alright guys, so I've got both sides of the Jeep. I've got the brakes themselves drying off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop the diff cover and drain the differential fluid and start inspecting it. Um, and then if you've never done this before, I guess this can serve as a quick tutorial on how to remove a C-clip axle as well. Make sure you just sit there and let that differential oil all drain out. Now this axle is a little bit low on differential fluid because the axle was upside down for a while and it actually drained out the uh, vent tube. So there isn't going to be a whole lot here to catch but you still want to make sure you catch this stuff because once it gets somewhere it just makes an absolute mess and it's really hard to get off because it's a very, very thick fluid. Getting in here looking at the 
diff. You can see the gears are actually in pretty good shape. There's no uh, wear or chip teeth. Um, spider gears look to be in good condition. Nothing looks like it was ran without fluid or galled up or seized. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep rotating it and kind of inspect everything a little bit. Now right now I'm just inspecting the ring gear. If you want to check the spiders, you're going to have to rotate an axle shaft to check those out. And they all look to be in pretty good condition too. So I don't see any major problems or defects with the axle. That's awesome. Um, so I don't think we're going to end up having to do any major overhauls to this. Depending on if the gears themselves turn out to be good for our powertrain. So the next thing we got to do is pull this differential cap off um, and then of course pull our 12 point quarter inch seven millimeter seven and a half millimeter screw out here so we can slide the pin out of the carrier. Alright guys, now I've sat here and I've let it go ahead and drip a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull this cap off. Uh, once again, make sure you note which way it's facing so you can put it back on the right way. set that here so it goes on exactly the way it was got a uh, quarter inch 12 point here we're gonna go ahead and get this off a little bit slow going here with this let me go ahead and I'm sure that hissing airline gets pretty annoying. I probably need to buy a new hose reel. You want to make sure you hold on to this screw here. It is a special pin. You'll see the threads at the top and where it physically slides through the pin there. So we're going to set this with our bearing cap. And then we're going to go ahead and drop the pin out. And you want to make sure that you inspect this, see if it's damaged. See if there's any problems with it, any wear indicators, but there aren't, that's in good shape. So the next thing we're gonna do is push in on the axle and drop out the C-clips. Um, being a little bit stubborn. So there's one C-clip. We're gonna put this over here on the left so we know it's for the left one. Let's go ahead and kick this one in and get this C-clip out and we will set it on the right just so we know that it's the right one. It's always good practice to make sure that you go ahead and put things back in the place where they came. Even bolts if you can, um, but especially parts that have worn together for quite a while. Just put them back the way they came and you should be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pull both of these axles out. When I do that, that's going to leave these two gears right here supported just by the other differential gears. So we'll go ahead and uh, get the axle shafts out. All 
All right, guys, so now we're down to the point where we've got our axle shafts out and we can actually see our brakes really well. There's a couple different ways that we can proceed from here. Um, the first way that we can proceed is we can go ahead and pull these old brakes off here and just go ahead and get down to the backing plate. But since I'm doing a, a mild refurb on this axle, I want the entire backing plate assembly to come off so I can refurb the entire thing. We're going to be putting in a new wheel cylinder, new brakes, new adjusters, uh, new springs, everything. So I'm going to go ahead and soak these. Well, first I'm going to wire brush the corrosion off the nuts on both sides of the axle. And then I'm going to go ahead and soak these in WD-40. And tomorrow we're going to pull this entire loaded backing plate right off. Um, just one assembly should go all right. So we're going to clean these up, get them soaking in some WD, and we'll be back tomorrow. All right, guys. So we let our four 916 nuts here soak in WD-40 overnight. I just went ahead and pulled them off with the impact. Uh, when you're done with that, you can start tapping the back of the backing plate. And uh, that'll pull the whole backing plate off, and we'll be able to take this assembly now over to the bench and redo the entire thing in one shot. So guys, as you can see here, we've got our brake backing plates pulled off. They're fully loaded. They got the brakes and everything on them. Um, this will just make them a little bit easier to work with here on the bench. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I can't do that. Um, it's a little bit different for me. Well, all you got to do is pull the line off on the back and disconnect the emergency brake cable up at the frame. And you can pull your entire backing plate like this right here and do the whole thing off the Jeep. Now, it might be easier for you to do it on the Jeep to get leverage on all these springs. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pull all this stuff apart because I want to refinish and refurbish the backing plates themselves. They've got a lot of corrosion on them. A lot of brake dust has leaked on them throughout the years, and I just want to go ahead and clean them up, get them all nice and done. Since we're going this far, we're going to go ahead and do it all, and we're going to do it right. So stick around with me. I'm going to take a couple pictures of this with my phone so I know how all this goes. Uh, and then I'm going to start disassembly on this to get it ready to go in a sandblast booth. So. So I'm just sitting here giving this stuff a good look, deciding which way I want to go about it. Now I have all these parts, so I, I can replace them all brand new. But some of these might be worth it to save as spares. Uh, definitely not the springs, so I'm not going to worry about those. I'll probably cut those off. Um, but the tensioner right here, uh, I, I, might, I might save that, the slack adjuster. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get a pair of wire cutters and start cutting some stuff away. Just in case you guys are wondering, this is a Matco brake tool kit uh, that I'm using. It's pretty awesome. I highly suggest it. Especially if you're going to be doing drum brakes, these springs can be a real pain in the butt. And some stuff you just got to get the good old pliers out of. Alright guys, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the wheel cylinders off real quick um, and get these things ready to be sandblasted. <laughs> 